Here we go. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead and call this July 11, 2018 meeting to order, please. And we can remove our view flag. Sorry for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Documents, meeting videos, fodder calls, treasurer's reports, chief's reports, and fire danger alert. I hope you're all aware we are at the uh, high danger alert, so there's no use of uh, no mowing or use of power equipment in dry grass areas uh, between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Correct, Steve? Yep. Okay. And with the, the high temperatures expected over the next several days, be on the lookout, DFPA perhaps might raise it to uh, an extreme fire danger level, which would mean no use of the, the power equipment all day long. 
I uh, posted the approved 2018 to 19 budget that I received from the chief. I scanned the website, including emails for viruses, deleted any that were present. There were no apparent viruses in all district email accounts and none on the website. There were apparent phishing emails. There was one in particular um, from an organization called Giving Assistant, and it was saying that they had um, something like $25 in donations coming to our organization. I haven't heard about the organization before, so I did contact SDAO to see if they knew anything about it. They did not, but Jennifer at SDAO was very helpful. She did some checking and got back to me. Um, she even checked on the, the Better Business Bureau website to see if it's an accredited organization, and it is. But there are some complaints about the organization but it does appear to be legitimate. What it does, it's an organization that makes arrangements with various businesses to get shopping rewards donated to nonprofit organizations. So let's say you know people get reward points from Home Depot, from Walmart. Um, those are just a couple examples. J.C. Penney, you know, from local stores that we have around here. A person can choose to donate their reward points to a nonprofit organization such as us. Now, in order for us to get that money, we have to create an, an account with this um, giving assistant organization. And I checked out what is needed in order to do that. And I tried to print out the information to give to you, but unfortunately, there was a paper stuck in the copier, so kind of overprinted, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to read it. But I would suggest that we decide if we want to go through the steps necessary to get the almost $26 that somebody, I don't know if it's somebody in our community or in another state, uh, um, made a donation to us. It appears that there is legitimate donation. My concern with the email that we were sent is that when I checked the raw source code of the email using a, a capability through um, our, our email through Douglas Fastnet, it indicated that there was um, a link in the email that's on um, on a, a blacklist database. Oh. So from SDAO, they recommended that we not click on the link in the email, but that we directly go through the, the website if we choose to do it. Now, if we choose to do it, we have to create an account, which means giving them some information like our treasurer, they, they want the finance person from our organization to set up an account so they need they would need your district email address, and we would need to create a password with that organization. And then what they would do is send what's called an e-check, an electronic check. They send it by email to us, and then you can print out the electronic check to deposit at the bank. From what I've gathered, the very first time it could take up to six months to get the check. After that, um, if there's any donations, they would send it quarterly. How long did it take us to earn $25.97? <laughs> Do we know? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. No. What One do you think? If we do set up an account, we would have access to see the email address of the donors. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if there's a possibility we may get more donations. If after a period of time we do not set up an account to get the money that was donated, it would go back to the donor. Hmm. I think if somebody there. wants to donate us money, they can just give it to us. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd rather if something like this doesn't have any personal information. Like, is, is that our tax ID number and they already have it? 
I, I read it, it looked like theirs. I don't think they have our, is it nine? well, they may have our tax ID number because it's public information, I believe. <laughs> I think organization. I don't think. Yeah, I think this just gives a bunch of personal information to somebody that knows it. Probably Oh, I, I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. No, they, they're saying please make sure your name, tax ID, number, and address are correct. So they do have that information. So I'm guessing that is public information because we are a public entity, uh, a nonprofit entity. And they collect this kind of information about nonprofit organizations from all over the country. So, so that if anybody wants to make a donation and we have not set up an account, they can still see our organization name and designate us. And as I said, if we don't set up an account with this um, organization, then the money would go back to the donor. So I've heard I'm, from Brenda. She yeah, feels I don't like it. it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm with Brenda. I, I'm I'm with, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, and if sure. somebody really wanted to donate, they know exactly where we're at. Because I mean, everybody knows we're here. Okay, so it's, it's kind of the ball. consensus yeah. of the board yeah. not to do anything. Yeah. I don't know that we necessarily need a motion. We're we're just kind of all agreeing, in not. Not to proceed. I mean, don't get me wrong. If they send us another letter, it's a couple of grand. They do that, though. <laughs> they send repeat letters yeah. from what I've read. And if it's a couple grand, then yeah, oh, that's uh, not to look into. <laughs> but if, if, if the amount increases. Yeah, I mean, this could have been for a couple of years. Yeah. So I, I would rather just keep us doing what we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Right. Still you, right? Uh, yes, I have not finished my report. Uh, proposed changes on the website, none at this time. Request for suggestions anytime anybody on the board um, from the fire department or the community has suggestions for the website, please send me an email so I'll know. Uh, Request, uh, let's see, communication with agencies, received text of fire department calls, received email newsletter from STAO, I already mentioned I had called them. Received notices from DFPA. Uh, communication with fire department. A list of made blotter calls and report were received from the chief. Communications with community. Post public notice for the July board meeting on website and at the fire station. And something else came up just a couple days ago after I had done my report. While I was in here uh, checking that all the software is up to date on the, com on the computer, somebody saw that I was in here, knocked on the door and came in. Apparently he's from some company from the coast who's doing some, I guess, construction work here um, and wanted to know if they could purchase water from us for making a slurry or something. And as far as I know, we don't have the option to do anything like that. I don't remember if he I think he, I may be wrong, but I think he said they needed something like 4,000 gallons. I don't know what the amount was for sure, but I suggested that um, he contact Uncle Basin Water um, so that if they wanted to give them the option and meter a hydrant somewhere in the area, they would be the ones to do that. So I gave them the phone number for that. Steve, have That's you ever heard of requests like that before? Yeah, we get our most one. That's a good answer, though. We can't pump our basin. Not it'd be our metered water. We'd be paying for it because right. uh, they don't want us coming out with hydro and anything. It's a fire suppression. Yeah, they. The, he said their company was very willing to pay for the water to have a meter, and they would pay for it. So that's why I suggested he contact Pump Co Basin. Yeah. All right. And then communications equipment. I upgraded software on the district computer. Anything else? Questions? Thank you, sir. Okay. Public comments? Good. Fire Chief, Steve uh, Rhodes. Uh, June 2018, we, it was real slow so far this month. I got it. I guess we say thanks to the public. Everybody seems to be doing, using their brains around here. A lot of places around us are having some problems and whatnot. Uh, we, uh, it's pretty cool because I was out in hand 
probably 10 days we didn't have a call that whole time. I wasn't even in the area half the time. I was down in uh, Roberts Creek or somewhere else. Anyway. So we had eight total, four medical aids, one structure response, two motor vehicle accidents, miscellaneous public, assi or public assist, lift assist for a person that was down. Um, training, training for the month, we had ropes and knots. We had water supply drills for our ISO evaluation. I'll talk a little bit more about that. We had the LPG classroom and live burn for, we did it for, the, for us, and then we uh, posted 10 mile Sunday, two Sundays ago, I think. They came over and did the same thing. Uh, we had some EMS incident reviews and uh, went over all our medical kits. And then we're doing, everybody's aggressively doing online wildland firefighter two and firefighter one, trying to get us all uh, up the certification for DFPA if they decide to man our station for the, during the extreme fire weather. So, uh, so the firefighters are doing those online courses. Uh, we're working on, uh, we're still doing a driver operator academy here. We're going to be doing a vehicle rodeo out here, probably a Saturday, two weeks from now, I think. Uh, we have two firefighter one applicants in the process. Uh, three of the firefighters we updated with them with the state. Two of them went inactive. They uh, haven't been coming here, and they've been off for a little while. And to maintain our certification, we have to classify them inactive. Then they can come back later, like if their job or their residence or something changes back, and they can, and they can get re. Um, relisted on the, the statewide thing. One, uh, Tom Johnson, Captain Johnson, officially retired. Um, we've had uh, we had a maintenance night for all the vehicles, also as training. And uh, then one of our firefighters got hired full time for DFPA, so he's working down there. And he's also and he's running calls here when he's off. Uh, explorers are for all around right along. A lot of them were in that uh, LPG class. That was the first fire for a lot of them. They was like a rude awakening, but they did really well. Uh, one of our explorers, one of the original ones, uh, Jasmine Keeney, she enlisted in the Army as a core, I guess you'd call them core woman, a core uh, medic, and uh, she's gone for four years, I believe. And uh, let's see, equipment, we're still working on 1090, adding more and more stuff to make it functional. 1031, one of the batteries went dead. We, uh, Replace both batteries. They're about eight years old, so that's a pretty normal life for them. Uh, pump tests are coming up for 1061, engine 31, engine 30. A uh, huge fire call today, so um, we're going to do that in conjunction with Roseburg next August or next uh, month. Inventory, we're, we're starting to receive some VFA stuff in order up. We received the rescue struts, they're over there stuck in the wall. Um, flashlights, so we had a good order of flashlights that were a good deal came in, so we started with those. And then I'm getting bids now for turnouts, thermal camera, gloves, and wildland clothing. The thermal camera, um, I got three companies. Um, that started out about $6,500, and they have a big sale going on, the company, Fleer, and they're uh, down, it's down to $5,100 now, so um, I'm probably going to go with that company. I've got three of them. They're ranging from one to like 5,700 or something. Um, and they're all local Oregon companies, so, that's, so that was good. Um, the turnouts, um, we're going to be working that over the next couple of months because I, I got a bunch of different companies coming down. They're all pretty much the same, right around $1,500 a set. So um, let's see, facility we uh, mowed. I'm going to try to brush hog early this week sometime. We've got to be down here before 10 or before. As long as they let us do it, keep doing it. Uh, this month, we had a lot of office and admin uh, stuff going on, excuse me. Um, the SDO workman's comp, we uh, paid that tonight. Um, the budget information got it down to the county assessor last week. Uh, SDO sends out an annual thing for updating our information and contacts and stuff. I sent that back. And also, they, they, they want our current budget info, so I sent that with it. Um, they, they sent us a request to have billing statements in the future be done electronically, so I sent that back saying mm -hmm. yes. And uh, uh, we also got the same request from the county tax department. O other than the tax checks, they want to send the electric electronic records of the uh, disbursements and stuff by, uh, by email, so I sent that back also. Um, the VFA grant, we're still waiting for the contract from them. Uh, 
last fiscal year since we're in July again, and closing it out. Made the entries and stuff that we needed to make, the changes, and uh, uh, the June 30th statement that came in the mail today, we'll be using that for the uh, in lieu of audit, audit here next month. There's, uh, there's still instruction you guys have probably all seen at the Looking Glass Gym. Met with them again about uh, siting with the new fire hydrant and fire access road. Um, we're working on the ISO upgrade. We've been meeting here every Wednesday afternoon with uh, Chief Scott and then uh, others, people, the State Fire Marshal uh, represent down here. Uncle Base of Water, Dispatch, and all that. There's a lot of uh, information and records that we had to pull up. So uh, July 25th, uh, the ISO representative is coming here, and that should be the end of it. Uh, it, looks, it looks like it's going pretty good. I think we'll, we're going to reduce, I believe, and they're going to approve this as an alternate water supply, which means it'll, it won't matter whether you live a thousand feet from a fire hydrant or not, but within that thousand feet, everybody will be graded the same because of the amount of water tenders we have in the area. So that's that. Thanks, Steve. Any old business? Yes, actually. I would like to know if you ever got clarification on other public agencies using our parking area. Well, I have not. No. That was back a year ago. No, we I were don't. started investigating that, and I don't recall that we ever got any clarification. Like the no. county or something. We're not talking about that person who well, wanted to do the yard sale. You know, like, yeah, county 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 they're bringing like their that. equipment on here. Um, or Steve, who was it? You were saying, was it DFPA, DFPA. that you wanting to leave a truck here? Well, DFPA the, used to park their bridge. Yeah, they'll here. park here on the side. They won't leave it unoccupied. They just park in the shade over here. Yeah, oh, park. but they won't be unoccupied. But they're still coming onto our property. Yeah. And I just want to be sure that we're not going to have any um, Do you open the liability too? concerns. I, I, I open the building, if I'm down here, we, we offer them the bathrooms and the, they come out in here and sit down if they want to. They're, uh, they, their supervisors aren't too hot about that. They yeah, like, yeah. Know, they kind of stink, so they, I mean, excuse me, but they sit, in the, they sit in that truck all day. No, we do have an interagency agreement of some right. sort with DFPIA, so maybe it's covered through that for them, but I don't believe we have anything with Douglas County, right. their public works or whoever it is. It um, SDAO sent me a reply, because I'm trying to think when that was. I, I have a letter somewhere that they replied back to me about what to do with that song. Okay, that so maybe you can let us know at the next meeting. And it may be something we don't need to be concerned about. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll dig that up. I remember uh, that getting back. Right <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Steve. All right, new business. First order would be election of officers for the position of 2018 and 19. They've already obviously been elected. So we just got to fill in for the positions. Um, position one, two, three, four, and five. I, it's for the officers. Officers. Like president, vice Correct. president. Correct. President, vice president, yes. quartermaster, secretary, treasurer, <laughs> communication officer. Um, I'm under the the belief that number one is the president, number two is the vice president. Am I wrong? As in the, the director's yeah. positions do not correspond to the officers. Oh, okay. Okay. So then, I think everybody's pretty comfortable in the job they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I could mention what we did last year is just made a motion to maintain right. all our current officer positions, but last year we added uh, Alan in because he, he was new. Okay, so this year I'm going to entertain a motion to leave it, all the positions exactly as they are. I so move. And a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, that passes. And then Jerry brought up a good point, and I see he made one. A calendar of activities so we don't come into a meeting blindsided. So we're always a step ahead of the curve. So in front of me, I got an LRFD calendar of activities, and then it's got date and monthly. It's got the activities, responsible, responsible person, and then an expense, yes or no. Oh, if there's going to be a cost factor such as posting in the newspaper. 
Right, and this is just a draft. I should have marked it at the top because I think it needs some work. But this was, to the best of my ability, some of the things that I thought. Some of the dates may be wrong, um, like for payment of insurance, workers' comp, some of those, um, or uh, what we have to do with regard to, to reports or payment to anything to IRS, to the State Department of Revenue, to County Assessor. So, you know, I, I'd like everybody to be reviewing this and then perhaps we could come up with a, 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 a more finalized version of it. And this is just for informational purposes. It's not like something we need to, I don't think we need to necessarily put it into the operations manual or anything like this. Like Robert mentioned, just to keep us on track to make sure we're doing in a timely fashion what needs to be done. That's a great idea. I think it looks great, yeah. I mean, I'll go over it in my spare time. Yeah, I have a little bit now. You, you may be, if you, don't have, if you don't have the back side on your sheet, the last item should have been for June adoption of the budget by the Board of Directors. agenda for, for next, next month, month to, to review we'll and any corrections to this. All right, president report. I am good. Uh, directors, anybody on the board have any comments, suggestions? Well, last uh, month, <laughs> Alan is not a signer on the account. Okay. So I phoned uh, the bank and got two different stories, yeah. which isn't a surprise. Um, so I wrote a letter for them, which you can sign. And if he goes in with someone who is a signer and shows them their ID, one story was they can just get it done. And the other story was, no, they have to send it to someone because we're actually municipal monies. It's not our money. And someone looks it over the paperwork and then sends us a signature card, which we could bring to the meeting next month. Okay. Which would be good. Um, so, I printed off the election thing that shows you did the, the, the there was an election. Yes. And, like that's off of the county website, okay. and then I printed off from our website who the directors the are, stuff. and then I did the the letter. Do I take this in? Would that do any good? To yes, I figure it can't sure. hurt. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, you, then you I, I talked to them on the phone, and then you go in there and you've got, and I didn't know the one in green. Yeah. So I'm not completely out of the yeah. How long have that been closed? Uh, too much. Oh, well, real loud. Very good. I didn't know the other one was. Last time we had so a little So you still have to go down with someone who's a signer. Oh, okay. I'll yeah. be in town tomorrow. I can, uh, I can give you a phone call. Give me a call. I have to go to the dentist. And when I get done, I can just give you a call. I got a doc, doctor reporting it. Um, well, then it might just work out perfect because my appointment's at 9. So yeah, it's just a cleaning. So what I'll do is, uh, as soon as I get out, I'll give you a call. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll just go to my appointment early. I know the last time we had any problems with the with the bank, uh, everybody had to go back and resign everything. Oh, like three, three times. times. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a nightmare. Well, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure they all have to sign the card. Yeah. That's why when the one came up with the story that they get the card right. and I could bring it to the next meeting, that would be yeah. very nice. So, will Robert be checking on that when he goes there? Robert and Alan? If you can check it. if any of the rest of us have to re-sign. I'll ask him that, or if we can just add them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so any other board member comments? Public comments, obviously not. Our next meeting is going to be August 8th of 2018. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move we adjourn the meeting. Second. As of 1937. Thank you very much. All good.